The graph, Changes in Conflict Types, outlines the different forms of war that have occurred between 1945 and the early 21st century. Looking at it, one thing is quite striking. Namely, that the old, predominant form of war waged between states has gradually been replaced by conflicts between state and non-state actors. Classical interstate warfare has declined, and conflicts between states and non-state armed groups like rebels, guerrillas, or terrorist groups has grown dramatically. In other words, the vast majority of conflicts over the last five to six decades were no longer waged between states, but have been fought between state and non-state armed groups. Given how the nature of conflict has shifted, what this means is that states for a long time have held a key advantage over their non-state adversaries, both in terms of their military capabilities and in terms of their monopoly over existing mass industrial media platforms. In other words, states have, for a long time, appreciated and enjoyed the ability to control the media representation of their wars against non-state armed groups. This structural situation, however, has changed fundamentally with the emergence of digital new media technology in 2002. The rise of digital new media has resulted in a structural shift from a multipolar to a heteropolar media landscape. One that is no longer characterized by similarity, but by difference. Not by multipolarity, but by heteropolarity. This multiplication and simultaneous diversification of structurally different media actors has heavily impacted upon the traditional relationship between old media and war. Digital new media technology has empowered non-state actors and individuals alike. It has empowered them to contest the state-policed war narratives, and it has thereby created the conditions for today's wars to be waged by both sides in and through media platforms. Unlike old mass media platforms, digital new media technology breaks down the age-old division between sender and receiver. Due to its cheap and user-friendly nature, together with its interconnectivity, simultaneity, ubiquity and interactivity, this has resulted in newly super-empowered non-state and individual media actors emerging alongside traditional media platforms. Thus, there has been a massive broadening and diversification of the number of actors who can produce media and utilize media platforms as part of their warfighting strategy. Furthermore, digital new media technology is much harder to control by states. Its online, networked and decentralized nature has offered a new breed of media actors a strategic tool to break the state's previous monopoly over the representation of warfare. The emerging media heteropolarity has empowered different types of actors to mediatize conflict. The way new media has impacted war reporting is really that it has splintered it. Uh, you no longer have sort of accredited journalists being sent to a war where you have a front between two opposing sovereign powers. Uh, and it has taken it so that it's being generated by a wide range of people, some of whom are highly partisan. You have terrorist organizations now which are putting out press releases and videos. You have governments which are putting out uh, pre-produced packages to explain their side of the story. You have soldiers uh, writing military blogs. Uh, pre presenting their own point of view from the battlefield itself, posting photographs on Flickr, uh, putting their information on Facebook, and you have traditional news organizations facing serious budget crunches, still trying to provide important reporting, boots on the ground reporting from these war zones, which are obviously is very expensive. So what's happened is that you now are getting a wide range of information, much of it distorted, coming at you and you have to be able to filter that. So what new media has done is it's introduced a wide range of voices into the conversation about war, but it has also diluted the authenticity of that reporting. 
The principal effect of digital new media, as Paul Sparrow argues, has been twofold. It has enabled a wide range of actors to enter into the conversation of war. And at the same time, it has splintered war reporting. Digital new media technology, in this sense, has fractalized, has balkanized the old global media landscape. It is disrupting and shaking up the workings of existing institutions. Thanks to digital communication technologies, a new breed of actors have emerged who have thrust the calculus of the old power structures. Their networked and decentralized nature is disrupting the way the world works. And they give us a key insight into the transformative potency of digital technology to usher in today's heteropolar global mediascape.